Hi, I'm Oliver, Principal of the International Macrobiotic School, and in this video I want to talk about the old nature versus nurture debate. Um, the reason that I've been thinking about this is because I've been doing some research into uh, what are called personality disorders, when people um, are somewhat um, disturbed and affected um, and have things like narcissistic personality disorder, um, or borderline, or sometimes uh, is called, um, uh, I can't remember what it's called, it's uh, like a difficulty in regulating one's emotions, men or emotionally unstable uh, personality disorder, antisocial person personality disorder, etc. And, you know, reading a lot of the literature uh, on this, there's a debate about is this caused more by nurture, by what has happened uh, when we were growing up through our childhood, um, or more by nature? Is this something that we brought with us uh, into this lifetime? Um, there's a big consensus these days that uh, nurture um, is a very big cause of um, our, our personality disorders and our kind of emotional, uh, mental makeup uh, altogether. Um, that our nurture, our upbringing has an enormous effect. Um, and um, if we've predominantly experienced you know, warmth, love, understanding, um, appreciation, support, etc., cetera, uh, growing up, then we tend to have more positive emotions and a more positive um, um, kind of attitude to ourselves in life. And if we've grown up with a lot of uh, trauma, violence, abuse, uh, or uh, or neglect, um, being ignored, uh, unappreciated, unloved, um, etc. These things have a very big impact on us and create strong emotions and strong defensive patterns, uh, strong behavioral patterns. And if the, the trauma or neglect has been strong, then it really contributes a lot to people being very, you know, really struggling with life um, and, uh, ha um, and having personality disorders. Um, so undoubtedly, and there's more and more evidence that um, our nurture contributes to them a lot, um, but there's also a debate about, well, do they also come from our nature, from our fundamental kind of personality or character or nature? Um, Western medicine, which has, you know, looks at things in quite a physical way, then jumps to thinking, well, it must be in the genes. Um, um, I find it quite difficult to understand how genes can produce very complex um, emotions and behaviours and thoughts and so on. Um, and what I see is that our nature is not only determined by our genes, uh, which definitely do have a very big effect, um, uh, more on a, you know, uh, uh, as a physical, something that we uh, have is physically creating us. Um, we also, our nature is also affected very much by uh, some other factors. Um, one is our previous lives. Um, when I was in my 20s and started studying macrobiotics and many other wacky things, um, I was really fascinated by the idea of reincarnation and past lives. And then when I was in my 30s, I started doing um, uh, a lot of things in my life. I was extremely depressed. I started doing some rebirthing, which is like cyclical breathing, which helps to discharge or release heavy emotions and beliefs patterns from the body um, and is, is a really powerful method of healing which I still use for myself and sometimes for others um, and I started having some very strong memories um, of what felt like a past life and then went to see a past life healer who just um, had the technique of just really relaxing me um, so that my mind was much less active and then visualizing using visualization to get into that, that particular past life and i studied past life healing and went into quite a lot of mine and helped learn how to help other people into their past lives and what i saw was that so much of what we are is what we brought with us from past lives you know it's like we are so complex our skills our understanding our emotions, our feelings are so complex. How could this all have just kind of happened in one lifetime? 
Um, I have to say that before I did the, you know, before I started experiencing my own past lives and learned, learned past life healing and observed a lot of other people going into past lives, it really made sense to me, but I thought, well, I don't really know. Um, actually experiencing it has made it much more solid for me. And um, I can see how a lot of, uh, um, a lot of me is made up from what has happened in past lives, as it is, I believe, uh, for all of us. What we bring from past lives is a lot of wisdom uh, gained from experience, a lot of skills. And this is why we're often drawn to and are very good at doing certain things. Some people are very good at art, some people are good at gardening, some people are good at mechanics and mending things, other people are good at theoretical physics, other people are good at maths, other people are completely crap at maths. Um, you know, why Why is this? Um, some people can, Mozart was composing music at the age of five. You know, no one had taught him, he hadn't learned, it came from inside of him. So how could have that come from inside of him? This is coming from his memory. Um, I very recently visited a member of my family um, uh, who has a very strong uh, warrior energy. And uh, she is very decisive, very, if she's going to do something, it happens fast and um, very dynamically. And, um, you know, so everybody knows that she has that kind of character. She just, she can make things happen. Boy, this needs to happen. Bang, it happens. She's got that kind of very strong, willful warrior type energy. And um, uh, in her house, um, first of all, I saw three epes um, used for, you know, practicing fighting hanging up just decoratively in one place and in another room there's a couple of japanese swords actually not the metal ones they're more wooden and then she was saying how she likes practicing with her sword um, um okay. <laughs> well, well, what, what's all that about <laughs> this is what she did in the past life and she has this energy um if you're using a sword and you're trying to you're trying to survive then you are decisive and dynamic and focused and you know, that's the energy she has. Um, so we all have, have bring so, so much good stuff from past lives. Um, and that's what creates a lot of our personality. And this is why if you've had children or observed other people having children, you, your children seem to have, you know, you know, roughly the same mixture of genes and same upbringing, and yet they are utterly and completely different. This is because they've had lifetime after lifetime after lifetime of experiences which have shaped and formed them. Unfortunately, we also bring um, negative things with us. Um, if we have experienced you know, had a lot of bad experiences, then we may bring very strong emotions, fears, resentments, anger, um, um, feeling bad about ourselves, feeling we're no good, you know, whatever, um, different beliefs, uh, we bring those with us into this lifetime. And you can see when you, when you, even when children are three, four, five years old, you can already see that there's so much to their character already uh, that they brought with them. And these more negative things that we're carrying, you could call our karma. And um, this is why the path of healing and self-awareness is so interesting. And this is, in some sense, this is why we have lifetimes, so that we can have experiences where we can learn and work the stuff out and, and get beyond these limitations because they, they limit us. If we're in fear all the time, we don't do things that we really want to do because we're just in fear and we don't talk to people or do things because of the fear. Or well, if we think we're no good, then we don't try and do things which actually we are probably really good at, um, et cetera. So this is where getting into healing, emotional healing, physical healing, food healing is great because this is how we change our karma. Um, so, you know, unfortunately, sometimes we, um, people come into this lifetime with heavy karma, with uh, a lot of heavy, um, um, destructive uh, feelings and beliefs. And um, we need to, if we, if we know them, then we need to help them um, do some healing work around this, some self-awareness work around, around this. 
and in much of the world right now we are so so lucky in really in a lot of the developed world there are so many amazing methods of healing ourselves macrobiotics makes its contribution to that a very strong understanding of how to heal ourselves with food uh, which not only affects our physical body, but also very much affects us emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. And um, various kind of spiritual practices and education towards uh, being a healthier, more balanced um, uh, in, um, way of being internally and, and externally, uh, and many, many other methods as well. Thankfully, much more awareness of emotional healing um, uh, really come to the fore many different methods and uh, much deeper understanding developing. Um, so um, our past lives contribute a lot to our nature and really determine a lot of who we are um, in terms of our skills and, and, and understanding and amazing wisdom that we all carry. Uh, and also um, uh, our difficulties and um, things that we struggle with in this life. And what I learned when I was, when I'd done a lot of work on my own past lives, past life healing, one could call it, and helping other people, is that life, 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 life is a sod. What we do is we repeat and repeat and repeat what has happened in past lives until we break the karma. Uh, maybe we have a strong pattern of feeling we're unworthy, we're no good, we don't deserve love because of what has happened in a, in a previous life. And then we bring that into this life and we will tend to recreate that until we become aware of it and really do some work to break that habit. And if we don't heal it in this lifetime, then we take it to the next lifetime and the next lifetime and the next lifetime. That is, that is, I'm tempted to swear, that is not a great setup to life, is it? However, um, we are blessed with self-awareness and consciousness and, uh, and spirit so that we can see these, become aware of these negativities that we're carrying and, and our, our spirit that carries light and can can feel love and light and friendliness and helpfulness and compassion can see what is not those things, what is not spirit. And they can identify the things which are burdening us. And, and, and then we can get stuck in with doing some healing work with these things. And then we make progression in this lifetime. <laughs> rather than staying stuck or quite possibly going backwards if um, you know, unfortunately we have a lot of unfortunate things happen to us. So this is a big part of the big part of what contributes to our nature uh, which is not yet kind of recognized in our kind of modern scientific and um, more materialistic uh, way of understanding life but I hope we'll come much way to the fore. And I'll mention another another one as well, which is what some people call family karma. Um, patterns get passed down from parents to children to cho to grandchildren, you know, etc. Um, so let's see if I can think of some examples. Um, maybe um, maybe one's grandparents had a strong pattern of not nourishing themselves and being out of touch with what nourished them and just feel that life is about doing your duty and doing your work. Maybe this comes from social norms. Maybe it comes from a particular re religious beliefs. And then that's how they bring their children up. That's how they brought your parents up to do your duty. That's the most important thing. Don't think about yourself. Don't think about your own pleasures. Just think about doing your duty and doing the right thing. And then, and then your parents grew up and um, you know, they grew up with those beliefs and then they raised you and they passed those beliefs on to you. And then, then you find you have children and you're say, maybe saying the same thing to your children. You need to do the right thing here. Don't, don't be selfish. Don't think about yourself and what you want. You've got to do the right thing here. You've got to follow the rules. And then that gets passed on, you know, gets passed on through the generations until until there's a generation 
And there's a person who, who becomes aware of that pattern and says, I don't want to do that anymore. Actually, I don't believe that that is true. I believe I, I, I want to fit in with society and I want to be helpful to other people. Um, but it's also really important that I nurture myself and get in touch with what's important to me in my life. I want to break this family pattern. I don't want to pass it on to my children. As a parent, I have to say, um, one of the horrors of being a parent is that at a certain point you realize that not only have you given your children uh, maybe a lot of love and support and attention, you've also passed on some of your worst habits uh, onto your children as well. Uh, not a pleasant feeling. Um, so this is, so uh, I don't want to end on a depressive tone. Uh, so this is another source of, um, you know, of, of, of what is, has formed our, 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 our nature is our family karma very good to become aware of it and um, break free of it the more we can break our karma uh, the more we become free the more we become light happy uh, loving can accept love uh, more on our path gaining a lot of satisfaction really making good use of this lifetime so that is a, a short take that i have on the uh, nature versus uh, nurture debate which has been around in western modern western society uh, for many decades okay thank you for listening uh, i wish you well i wish you well in your healing and your breaking of karma and becoming uh, happier and happier for no reason other than that you're you're a human being and part of life <laughs>